Okay, so this year we are going to do a fall winter garden and I'm going to show you what I'm kind of doing in the next week. So you have like a week to kind of organize your seeds, get all your stuff ready and that sort of thing. So it's not what you probably are thinking. I'm not going to just put stuff in the ground and it's not going to be just greens. I am going to do more fruits. So cucumbers, for example, and I'll teach you how to like pick very specific varieties of those to make sure that it obviously results in a harvest for you. Now I am, as you guys know, I've expressed this before, I'm trying to get healthy. And so obviously having that fresh produce and herbs and lettuce and all that stuff is going to propel me uh, and help with my health. Speaking of trying to be healthy through eating tons of fruits and vegetables, the other way I am staying healthy this year is actually through Ritual, which is today's sponsor. So Ritual, if you did not know, is a vitamin supplement company that makes stuff that is it's endless. Like they make everything you could possibly think of. So the two I'm doing is Symbiotic Plus and then I am doing the prenatal. So the prenatal, as you guys know, I've been suffering with infertility for three, four years now. And because of that, I think I've tried like every possible prenatal vitamin out there. My experience with prenatals is like all over the map. I have sometimes ones that literally enter my digestive system and then I immediately throw them up because they do not sit good on my stomach. I also travel a lot for work. I go to like the lake, vacations, all that sort of stuff. And if you're doing like the whole fertility thing, you have so many different vitamins that you've brought or convinced yourself you need. So I'll have like a fish oil bottle and my omega bottle and my multivitamin bottle. But Ritual is actually kind of nice because it's like almost like a dual capsule. So the inside's like the powder, like the multivitamin. And then the outside is like a gel. And anyways, it has all your omega threes, that sort of thing. Editing Ashley here. I was fact checking myself just to make sure I'm not blowing smoke up anyone's bum. And I was on Ritual's website. I don't know how I missed this the first five, six times I looked at the website, but the omegas are from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. That is where I live. A, B, they're vegan and they come from microalgae because that was my next thing. I was like, we don't really have fish here. We're in borderland a desert. Microalgae, so freaking cool. Anyways, all their ingredients are, there's known sources. It's, it's not junk. Everything you need inside of it. So it cuts down like the number of pill bottles I need to run around with. It doesn't upset my stomach and it's like a, an all-in-one, which I can appreciate. So the Symbiotic Plus is a prebiotic, uh, postbiotic, and a probiotic and it's worked actually pretty well for me. Okay, so this is kind of crazy and this is like no word of a lie. I, I, my bloat in my belly has gone down so much that people, like my mother-in-law even, was like, you lost a ton of weight, like in the last week or two. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not that. It's literally just my digestive tract decided to work again. So I'm gonna leave the link down below. You guys can check that out if you like. Ritual, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. I'm excited to continue using your guys' vitamins because they make my tummy feel better. Well, let's get back into what we need to grow in August. Okay, so number one, when we're growing in August is actually dealing with the heat. So it's incredibly hot, it's incredibly dry, and seedlings do not vibe well with that, particularly seedlings that you intend to grow later into the season. So what you need to do is you do need to start everything in trays or cells and these trays and cells should be placed in like a shady spot or indoors somewhere that's not mega mega hot. Now you don't want things leaning so don't put it in too much shade that things are beginning to kind of stretch for the light but just watch them. Um, if they need shade cloth they need shade cloth. You, you'll know the signs of scorching or excess heat because it's super obvious when you do see them. So that's number one. Number two is if you do choose to put the cells outside is that you're going to want to cover them. So you're going to want to cover them more specifically, not just with like a pest net for like birds and that sort of thing. You're going to want to actually put like a bug net on top, which is kind of similar to like what I have in the front yard with my netting on my brassicas that is what you'd probably want to do over top of your seedlings because you're also contending with like a ton of pests 
that are now very fully functional in the middle of the summer and you want to protect obviously your seedlings the next thing you want to consider is actually the type of seed you're getting which is like there's two very specific things not just the growing degree days there's another thing that is very specific that you need to look for okay so the other thing to look for is actually the growing days so the total number of days you have left in your growing season so for me i have somewhere around like 40 to 50 so you can look for ones that days to harvest are at the 40 to 50 mark you obviously will be harvesting these before the frost. If you choose to go for something that's at like the 60 to the 70 mark, or you choose to start things later because you want to be growing into like the fall winter months, then you need to consider obviously covers and what type of plant you're going with. Okay, so this one has made this mistake like repeatedly and I think it's because I'm so freaking stubborn that I just refuse to listen to logic and that is the fact that you can't or you shouldn't grow plants that need full sun so hear me out the lettuce there's different lettuce out there so there's the shade tolerant lettuce for example that only needs like four hours of sun and then there is lettuce that needs full sun that is like six you know six to eight hours of sun you always need to go for the more shade tolerant ones even if you're going to plant them in full sun. Now, the reason for that is because the days are getting shorter and they continue to get shorter. And by the time September rolls around, the days will be so short that you're not gonna get the proper growth off of something that's meant to be in sun, full sun for eight hours. And I've experienced this over and over and over again. This year, I'm going to actually listen to logic and get something that isn't, uh, doesn't need like the full sun effect. Very important. So the other thing that I wanna consider is actually getting plants that can go to minus five and up. So, I can keep my cold or my low, and you can keep your cold and your low tunnels, and I'll show you how uh, later on. You can keep them in and around like the minus five and up point for quite a while. It could be like minus 10, minus 15 outside, and you can actually keep the inside of that tent pretty darn high. Okay, so the idea here is to get the bulk of the growing done. So think of it this way. You're gonna grow your kale or your lettuce or your spinach or your bok choy, whatever it may be. You're gonna grow it to the point of pretty much harvestable with like very little to no growth remaining. This is where I think people get confused about fall and winter gardening. The idea isn't to continue to get growth. The idea is to actually get enough growth going still that the plant isn't dying. So. Think of your cold or your low tunnels outdoors almost as a, a fridge, if you will, but a living fridge. So the idea isn't so much to have things growing and continue to grow. The idea is actually to preserve and keep things green and healthy and happy for a longer period of time. So then you can pick from that plant, but it will not actively grow, uh, particularly when these hours of light start getting like really, really, really low. I will say the, the heat out in Saskatoon, it was like really cold yesterday and today it's like stupid hot like stupid hot okay so here's my list of what you can grow i will say what i am slash what i'm not growing so there is broccoli i won't be growing broccoli but i will be going for broccolini brussels sprouts i won't be going for brussels sprouts they need way too much growing time cabbage won't be going for cabbage collards i will be going for those and peas but peas more specifically after they've flowered and set fruit those by the way all can go down to minus five degrees celsius no problem they will bounce back just fine winter kale also is another one they'll bounce back just fine and i actually am going to plant those and those can actually get pretty big here in the next little bit so those are kind of the big ones the peas are the ones i'm like be most interested in. Okay, so the next kind of grouping of what you could do, and these ones can also, they can go down to minus five as well. They just really cannot go any lower. So those are kale, kohlrabi, mustard greens, parsley, radish, spinach, and turnips. Now these, like I said, can go down to the minus five. They're pretty darn hardy, but they really don't like to push farther than that. They like to definitely stay higher, higher than that, ideally. Now, semi-hardy are ones that you can grow and they will do well up until the first frost, 
but once kind of the first heavy frost hits, they might make it through the first one. The second one, they'll be toast. And so these ones, again, are ones that you can harvest from because a lot of the mass is underground, so it will be unaffected by a frost. But the, the stuff that catches the light in the photosynthesis obviously is not going to do too great because it's going to be damaged. And you can almost tell that these plants are like semi-hardy because they have drastically thinner uh, less intense leaves than the ones that I listed above. Like if you touch a pea leaf, like you, there's a lot there physically compared to these other ones I'm about to list off. So the semi-hardies are actually going to be beet, carrot, celery, uh, Chinese cabbage, endives, Irish potatoes, lettuce, radicchio, rutabaga, and Swiss chard. So again, you touch the leaves and you can kind of tell for the most part. Lettuce would also fall into this grouping i wouldn't go for heads of lettuce i would go for loose leaf lettuce if you can so there you have it that is everything that you need to know about growing getting ready to grow for fall and winter sorry to be the bearer of bad news but that is my plan and like i said i'm probably gonna start this around like first week in august ish i'm gonna start getting this stuff ready so i'll talk to you guys next time stay cold this heat my goodness bye